Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. In a modern world where wars are fought not with weapons but with information, the significance of intelligence has surpassed the power of conventional armaments. In this setting, spy drones play an indispensable role in conducting intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance missions to secure strategic advantages for the military. Knowing the value of unmanned aerial vehicles, militaries all around the globe have heavily invested in building their own unmanned platforms. The U.S. military is no exception, and they are building the world's most intimidating spy drones. The history of remotely piloted aircraft dates back to the early decades of the 20th century. During this time, the efforts taken to remotely pilot full-sized aircraft proved to be challenging. The world's first UAV, the Aerial Target, was introduced by the British Army in 1914 as a radio-controlled flying bomb intended to combat enemy Zeppelins. Despite the challenges faced during the infancy period, UAVs eventually evolved to become one of the most technologically advanced pieces of equipment in modern warfare. Throughout the timeline of the past century of progress and refinement, the introduction of the RQ-4 Global Hawk is a leap forward in unmanned aerial technology. Introduced in 1998 under the supervision of the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, or DARPA, the U.S. Air Force as a high-altitude, long-range, unmanned aerial vehicle. The advanced sensor suite and cutting-edge communication enable real-time data transmission, offering a technological edge in critical missions. The drone cruises above 60,000 feet, clearing usual air traffic and weather conditions, with an impressive endurance of over 30 hours. The spy drone features high aspect ratio wings, with a wingspan greater than a B-737 aircraft, offering low drag and high lift. This design enables the drone to extend its range over 12,300 nautical miles and provides an impressive loitering time. The bulbous nose, which resembles a whale's nose, houses the 1.21 meter wide KU wideband steerable antenna, which is used for satellite communication. A single Rolls-Royce AE3007 engine mounted at the rear fuselage between the V-tail propels the drone and powers an electrical generator that supplies energy to the onboard avionics. The V-tail design minimizes the drone's radar and infrared signature. Despite being unmanned, the RQ-4 Global Hawk can be remotely flown by a ground pilot. A greater portion of the flight is flown autonomously according to a pre-flight plan, but remains under the oversight of a remote pilot.
the pilots are stationed at a common ground segment comprising the launch and recovery element and the mission control element. The launch and recovery are under the scrutiny of the land and recovery element, manned by one pilot. The mission control element serves as the cockpit during the mission profile, which covers a significant portion of the flight. This element is manned by a pilot and a sensor operator. Maintaining a state-of-the-art drone with unique requirements is no easy task. With that said, Global Hawk maintenance is handled by three specialized units. The first unit is the Aircraft Maintenance Unit, which undertakes on-aircraft maintenance. The second unit, the Equipment Maintenance Unit, is responsible for off-aircraft maintenance, where parts are taken off the aircraft for repairs. Right now, after it landed, you know, we uh, do our intake and exhaust inspections. We do a BPO pre-flight. We refuel it, weigh it, obviously, make sure that if there's any faults in flight, we fix the errors. The communications maintenance unit, which is the third unit, works on the communication segment, including the cockpits, ground control elements, and avionics related to data dissemination. A successful mission is backed by several tiers of operation, including maintenance, ground control, and the availability of mission intelligence data. During a mission, operators collect images and signals to support ground troops. Both line of sight and beyond line of sight communication are used for intelligence dissemination. With the unmatched capabilities of modern autonomous platforms, they started appearing in various missions. Initiatives were taken to utilize existing rotary aircraft to cater to the present needs. The UH-1 Huey Autonomous Aerial Cargo and Utility System is one such system that uses Huey helicopters for autonomous cargo delivery. The aircraft can perform takeoff, landing, approach, and obstacle avoidance like a manned helicopter. This platform perfectly suits resupply missions, crossing hostile airspaces where the risk is too high for manned operations. The autonomous kit comprises a software package and a hardware part. The operating software receives data from a set of sensors and flies autonomously to the desired location. It can take off, land, and avoid obstacles such as buildings and power cables on its own. The sensor turret at the helicopter nose equips a LiDAR and an optical sensor. The software package uses the images from the sensors to identify obstacles and alter its flight path. When required, troops can request a resupply with a click of a button from the handheld tab and could abort a landing if the circumstances are not right.
During the testing runs, the helicopter was manned by a backup pilot for redundancy, while the autonomous kit flew the helicopter. In addition to gathering intelligence and undertaking resupply missions, remotely piloted aircraft can be a great asset for target training. A full-scale aircraft simulates real-world combat conditions, offering a realistic representation for training pilots and soldiers and testing weapon systems. The QF-4 was a modified F-4 Phantom II aircraft that operated remotely for target training. It served a key role within the aerial target fleet until its retirement in 2016. Being a supersonic jet with a maximum speed greater than Mach 2 and a service ceiling of 60,000 feet qualified the QF-4 to test the capabilities of modern weapon systems. A safety pilot manned the cockpit for evaluation, but the aircraft flew remotely when used as an aerial target. During its final sortie, an F-35 Lightning II fired two AIM-120 AMRAMs to test the F-35's ability to track and guide the missiles to the target. The missiles were self-destructed before killing the aircraft. With the countdown of the QF-4, the aerial target squadron transitioned to the more advanced QF-16 as their new guinea pig. They will be extensively used for testing advanced air-to-air -air weapon systems. Like the QF-4, the QF-16 Zombie Viper can be flown manned or unmanned. During the conversion from the F-16 to the QF-16, a set of drone peculiar equipment is added to the aircraft. The automatic flight control computer acts as the brain of the drone and functions along with the universal remote autopilot. Usually, the two stabilizers and wingtips are painted bright orange to make the target drone stand out when flown with other aircraft. In addition, the drone has a visual augmentation system that will kick in with the loss of the command telemetry system to emit smoke and indicate that the drone has lost communication with the ground. In such a scenario, the flight termination system can self-destruct the aircraft immediately if the drone becomes uncontrollable. The remote pilot can fly the drone within its full flight envelope, even performing high G maneuvers. One safety pilot can control up to four drones at the same time. As the pilot does not get any camera feed, he relies on a display that shows the aircraft's heading and pitch, among other vital parameters. With the rapidly evolving demands in today's military world, aircraft automation has gained sizable momentum. Spy drones pioneered this trend, catering to the intelligence demand that plays a crucial role as timely information has now become the lifeblood of a mission. In addition, autonomous aerial targets have leveled up training and testing, allowing more realistic simulations that will definitely reflect better results during real-world encounters. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.